Our next guest is uh, a homie. You know him. You love him. Johnny Linehan on the program. Talk about the specialist. Johnny, what is up, my man? That Royal Blue is looking good, bro. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Glad to be here. Uh, everything's going well. Just excited for this weekend. Made a spontaneous trip to go down with one of the homies to the game. So I'm going to be there. Excited to be back in full capacity and get rowdy with the Cougs. It's going to be awesome. I know you were dealing with the uh, 30% service fee from StubHub. Uh, so welcome to the <laughs> life that everyone else has, right? Yeah, I know. It's been it's been a long time since I've like been that quick to exit a website once I've seen the price on that. So I was like, man, it's got to be got to be got to be cheaper tickets somewhere else. So no, yeah, we'll we'll bite the bullet. We'll stay with some friends as well, so we'll save some money there. But yeah, I mean, what's that Mastercard ad, right? Watching the Cougars beat Arizona again is priceless. Priceless. Mm -hmm. You know, let's get it big picture. What what do you make of this team? What excites you when you look at this team in general as it gets ready to begin the year? Well, obviously the specialists, right? Well, of course. But, I mean, talking of the talking of the team in general, there are actually quite a few unknowns. I was going to go down to a practice at fall camp this year, and just before I got in the car to drive down, I was like, that might be a little bit weird. Most of these guys, I mean, the coaches, most of the coaches will know me because they're still there. But a lot of the players, when I went to walk through the locker room, they were kind of looking like, who's this guy? I had a work shirt on. And I think they were thinking I was trying to sell some NIL deals or something like that. So they were all on their best behavior. But I was like, no, I used to be used to be on the team, guys. I'm old now. But so I thought it was. Yeah. So I actually stayed away from from fall camp this year and didn't end up going down. So there's a lot of unknowns. Uh, and we obviously lost a lot of good production last year, but we did retain some talent. We did bring in some more talent through transfers and other recruits. So a lot of unknowns. I'm excited. I'm pretty bullish. But I also, I think there's going to be a little bit of a learning curve for some players. So I don't know if we're going to be able to hit the ground running as fast as we ended last season. Yeah, last year was certainly special in, in a million ways. The good news is BYU is playing Arizona. Uh, I feel confident that BYU will win and win convincingly. That margin, I will, I believe in, will be revealed tomorrow. But let's talk about the specialists, okay? Let's start with kicker. Jake Oldroyd is back. Somehow five years ago he was freshman, and he's a sophomore. <laughs> um, this guy's legit, Johnny. Um, what, what do you, how do you feel about him, and what's he capable of after being a Lou Groza finalist last year? Yeah, well, Jake, obviously, his freshman year ended up redshirting in 2016 because he got hurt in our third game against UCLA. So, yeah, he kind of went on his mission, came back, and still had all of his four years, and then COVID gives him another year. So he might be, you know, serving his senior mission while he's still finishing up his playing days at BYU. <laughs> but, but Jake, yeah, Jake and I, we, we hit it off right from the beginning. It's kind of funny because... Uh, just kind of the story and why I'm so bullish on Jake and and also why I'm his biggest fan and why we have a bromance on Twitter. There's a little bit of a story there, so I'll, I'll try and do the too long, didn't read version. But during our, when he first came to BYU as a walk-on, no one knew who he was, right? We're out there kicking, and, and as soon as I saw him kicking, just before fall camp had even begun, I was like, man, this kid is special. There's a lot to him. Anyway, so we go in, he starts full camp pretty much on the first day, tears his meniscus, right? This is actually on a Sunday, so maybe just after we had reported for fall camp. Still, no one knows what he's doing or, or, or who he is. So he's in his apartment just stretching, and he calls me up, and I'm in church getting ready to pass the sacrament. And he's like, hey, Johnny, I, I just was stretching, and my knee popped. And I was like, hey, Bishop. Sorry, I got to go. <laughs> something else. Just kidding. I obviously fulfilled my calling and whatever. And then when I then went and picked him up. Anyway, we went to his apartment complex. He couldn't walk. I was like, man, what did you do? He's like, I was just stretching. So anyway, I'm like, all right, jump on my back. <laughs> so I piggyback him down the stairs, <laughs> throw him in the car. Good news is training room is open on Sundays, you know, because they're, they're doing the Lord's work. And so um, we went in and we and I said to Steve, our head trainer, and I said, hey, Steve's a homie. He loves me. He doesn't know Jake. So usually a player that you don't know and is new and is a kicker might not get the treatment. But I see we got to get this guy and he's special. He's going to help us win games. So we got meniscus surgery a couple of days later, two weeks after meniscus surgery. He's out there kicking 60 yard field goals. We know how that ends with the Arizona game winner. But then he had this nagging back injury. So really, the only question mark is, can he stay healthy? But when he's healthy, he's a superstar. He is special. You're telling me Torres meniscus weeks before the Arizona game in 2016 and then goes out there and yeah. kicks the game where? 
Yeah, so what's interesting, we had a, we had a, some unknowns there, especially at kicker. Obviously, we had an amazing punter. We didn't have to worry about that yet. But kicker, there were some question marks. <laughs> and so, <laughs> just kidding. But maybe slightly above average, a little bit mediocre some days. But statistically speaking, the punter was all right. Anyway, but with our kicker, right, Coach Sataki, after one practice, we had a pretty bad practice with our kickers missing left and right. And Coach Sataki was like, Johnny, what are we going to do? I said, J Jake, don't worry about it. Like, when he comes back, he'll be good to go. So it's kind of funny how it all worked out. And then, obviously, he comes back. His first field goal is a game winner. So that's why it's so special. That's why it'll be one of my favorite moments ever. You know, Johnny, and we're having fun, you know, talking about how great the, the, the special teams and everything are and the kickers. But when you look at having a guy like Oldroyd and having a punter like Ryan Rico, I mean – Ryan Rico probably doesn't get talked about enough and as much as we should be talking about how good he is when he's out there punting. Between the two of them, that is a massive weapon for BYU. Yeah, I 100% I believe we have the best, best special teams in the country. And I know I like to make a joke of the position. I know a lot of people like to make fun of the special teams. But having a reliable kicker and having a punter that can flip the field like Ryan – Ryan is such a special talent, and we didn't see that last year, which is probably a good thing. This year, with a much more difficult schedule, I expect us to see it and, and really see what a weapon he is. But he's an NFL guy. So is Jake. Both of these guys are just NFL guys. And for me to say that, I recognize there's 32 spots in the world for a punter and then 32 for a kicker. And so having two NFL guys be that reliable, it's, yeah, we're witnessing something special on the special teams at BYU. Tell me about Ryan. What what makes him such an excellent punter? 45 uh, a kick last year, and I believe he would have been one of the tops in the country, but he had too few punts because Zach Wilson and the boys were scoring too often. Yeah, so, I mean, you go and watch Ryan as he's warming up, and you see how consistent he is, right? It starts with the drop. Everything is the same. Every punt is just a, a bomb, right? When I did, I was learning the drop would be all over the place. Sometimes I'd hit a good one. Sometimes it would be average. But Ryan's is, like, consistently very, very good. And then he's got the measurables. He's a tall. He's a big guy. He can just put his leg through it like someone who's shorter. Like, I, I just can't. And so he's got everything, and then he's been practicing for a long time. Yeah, he's really kind of got the perfect chemistry for a punter. But it's consistency. You'll see this guy warm up, and it's like the same ball over and over. And they're all monster balls. We've talked, obviously, about the, the 2016. We've referenced it a couple of times in this interview already. T take us back. What do you remember from that game in 2016 in Glendale against the Arizona Wildcats? Yeah, I remember everything, right? Like I said, it was an awesome moment. I, I remember the games I punt pretty well in, right, more than the ones that I don't, and definitely don't remember any ones where I do other things other than punting. But, well, you know, we started off, and we were feeling pretty good going into the first – first game we knew Arizona was a decent opponent they had some you know question marks with coaching staff etc but we we prepare for camp and we're pretty confident going into game one very excited so we come out you know I think we score first but then we missed the we, we missed the PAT and so I think with the first we actually scored a field goal first it was pretty shaky low one that just got over the over the line and then we missed the PAT and so from there the coaches are kind of like well what do we do what do we do well, anyway, like you see with any game, the PAT usually comes back to haunt you. So we find ourselves down one at the end. And, yeah, obviously we need a, need a field goal. And by that point, it was like Jake's the next kick. He's the next field goal. Didn't matter if it was in the third quarter, fourth quarter. It just happened to be the last kick of the game. He was taking the next one regardless. So he knew that. He'd been warming up for that. And it was just kind of a, a perfect scene, really a Disney movie, that he got to take that game winner and, and nail it like he did. How many guys on the team didn't know who he was or his name at that moment? Yeah, it was funny. I do remember that, too. A lot of people were like, who is this guy? I remember Jamal <laughs> coming up to me. Jamal coming up to me, like, right before the kick, being like, hey, Johnny, who's this guy? Is he any good? Is he going to make it? You know, Jamal pretty you know, out there. And it's funny because even the fans, right, as a punter, I kind of have a different role where it's like I I'll get in the mindset, like, yes, I have to always be in the mindset ready to go on the field. But as soon as we pass the 40, it's like, hey, I can pretty much switch off for 40 minutes because I'm probably not going on the field. So anyway, <laughs> obviously, when the, when the game's over overtime, it's like I'm just a dude on the sideline, really. It's like I'm a waste, it's waste of space because I wasn't holding. And the fans, right, as they call the timeout to try and ice check, they're like, hey, Johnny, who is this guy? <laughs> you know, he's got the green cleats on and Under Armour shirt underneath, you know, that Nike had a fit about, but we didn't give him one. And so they're like, is he going to make it? And I was, yeah. 
I was really confident. I said, hey, like, I'm confident he's not going to miss. He's going to make it. So it's funny when he kicked it, right? I, I, you can kind of see, no one would notice, but you can see like my feet on the screen running past. I just went down to the kicking net. I said, all of the guys that don't know who he is, they're going to want to celebrate with him, you know, jump on him because he kicked the game winner. Be like, yeah, good kick. Who are you? You know? But I was like, we'll, we'll, we'll meet at the kicking net and we'll celebrate afterwards. So I just let him have that moment. And it's an <laughs> awesome moment. I, I still watch it probably once a week because it was really special. Am I, am I, rem incredible. am I remembering this? Didn't Detmer say he had no idea who he was? Didn't Denver say I that? Didn't, I didn't know who Jake was at the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, yeah, Jake Jake played in Texas, so maybe, you know, they, they he kind of know knew of him. But that was the game where Denver, I think, right, he had, like, he was eating, like, 10 chapsticks. He's on the, you know, on screen. He loves right that. that <laughs> yeah. And right, yeah, right as the timeout, I think Denver goes up and, like, high-fives him and just says, gives him a vote of confidence. But... Yeah, that's kind of the worst thing you want to do to a kicker. Just let him be in his space. He's going to nail it. But that I will say, that's the thing. That's why I'm really bullish on Jake. He's got that mindset. Yeah. We did speak in 20, 2019, I believe it was, when he was doing punting and kicking. He was having a bit of a rough season, and he came over after a couple of rough games and was just trying to you know, talk with me, hey, how do I get back in the groove of things? And, but really focusing just on one kicking, being able to have that mindset of just kicking has really helped him out. That's why he's, he should have won the Groza. That's why I think he will be up there again and hopefully win it this year. Yeah, he's an incredible kid. Um, the story's incredible. And uh, we learned even more than we already knew about that. So, Johnny, <laughs> as always, we appreciate the time breaking down the specialists like nobody else can. Yeah, thanks for having me. Go Cougs. Okay, we'll thanks, see you Johnny. down there. Johnny Linehan on BYU Sports Station. So